I'm sorry. Thank you very much. And I um, just got a tip, but I also have some questions I want to ask. This has been a very interesting panel, and I appreciate your contributions, each one of you. I will single out two people because five minutes goes very quickly, but I understand this policy for you. I ask you my question, which I'm very interested in your response to, that you, there, you never got to weigh in on the risk uh, adjustment or risk insurance. Well, I didn't think I was asked, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm asked, that's why I'm giving you a chance to. If you could briefly do it, if you sure. Um, I think reinsurance is a mechanism that has been tried on a voluntary basis in a lot of insurance markets, and public reinsurance has been tried um, in a few states as well. It's simply another way to subsidize health insurance. At the end of the day, if it's public reinsurance, um, instead of subsidizing the premiums, which come regularly on the first of every month, you need to sort of reach in and find somehow the high cost claims or the high cost patients. So it, I think, can achieve the same thing. It is more complicated. There are many more transactions involved. Um, and uh, at, at the end of the day, you need to make sure that if the end result is to subsidize the premiums, if that's what you want, to have the premiums reduced then you need to have very, very good transparency to make sure that all of those savings from the reinsurance actually find their way back into reducing the premiums. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> kind of like we're having with AIG now, you're, you're, you're putting you. a bailout in and you're not getting the result that you okay. want. Okay. Thank you. Now, could I ask you the question I had intended because, and you'll understand why when, when I tell you where I'm coming from. I'm hesitant about proposals that suggest that people should just purchase insurance in the individual market, whichever state they are from or wherever they are, uh, because there are states like California that offer much stronger minimum protections for insurance. For example, California mandates screening for osteoporosis, while most other states do not. That happens to be a topic I'm personally very interested in. California also requires private insurers to cover treatment for eating disorders. More than half of the states do not. So that would make a huge difference uh, to Californians um, uh, if they got their insurance in another state uh, that then refused to cover, and they, they came to California and refused to cover that. Wouldn't a public option be able to account for variances in state protections and be more consumer friendly? Also, uh, couldn't a public plan be formulated in a way that protects the strongest minimum coverage provided to individuals so that you would get the benefit of, from living in a state where these things were, were mandated. It is absolutely up to the Congress to determine whether you want to set these standards at the lowest or the highest common denominator or somewhere in between. So you absolutely could create a public program that provides for comprehensive coverage so that people get the care they need everywhere. And I would defer to Mila on the other issues about selling coverage right. in addition to um, uh, the concerns about not being able to access benefits, I think there are real questions about, and I have enormous respect for Mila, but whether she has the resources to enforce against a plan in California um, or a resident of her state who would buy uh, 3,000 miles away and then get into trouble, I think it right. would be very difficult. And, and some of the us in states like California are worried about the opposite. Um, uh, but it, I can see it going both ways. I, for example, we worked, people who worked so hard in California to do the things that, like what I've just mentioned, uh, this would be a huge step backward if we would be forced into uh, what we would consider a, a, a step backward. But I, and I also want to, um, I'm going to need a little extra time, Mr. Chairman, because I, I kind of did something else too. But uh, because, Ms. Kaufman, I'm really interested, uh, you, can, you can speak to this one issue if you'd like to, but I wanted to learn more about the programs uh, that, that you have been able to create, which bridge the gap between Medicaid-covered individuals and those who are uninsured but don't quite qualify for Medicaid. Um, for example, I'll tell you where I'm coming from in my district. Uh, in fact, in each of the three counties I represent, we have seen some very innovative proposals, such as county-organized health systems, which better capture all Medicaid-eligible individuals um, and using a sort of a managed care model, a nonprofit, but a locally organized uh, one. And also then there's another program in Ventura County, which, which refers to the person I acknowledged this morning in my opening statement. Because she lived in Ventura County, those who are uninsured but don't qualify for Medi-Cal 
or Medicaid in, in, uh, in Ventura County have, a, have a, a access to another program, and they've seen such a dramatic decline in emergency room visits for non-urgent care as a result, and that's the kind of outcomes we should strive for because they can put that money back into the system and help extend it to more individuals. The reason it works, and this is what I would like you to verify or, or add to, is because it's public-public partnership, whereby the local government it can provide the innovation and creativity and creating a system that works best for their particular population. Can you t uh, t talk, I know it's briefly now, about how you've done this. How have you managed uh, to tailor a plan that Maine really benefits from? We, we have a slightly different partnership, public-private partnership, uh, which I call a bridge program. It's called Dear Go Choice. Um, right now, due, due to funding uh, challenges, it's not open for new enrollment. But essentially, uh, the state helps to pay for the premiums. There's a private insurance company that provides the coverage, but it's the Dirigo agency that negotiates the benefits, the price, um, and people who really can't afford the private coverage but are working and make too much money mm -hmm. to qualify for the public insurance program that's the place where they can get coverage where there's a private payer that pays their medical bills and the state helps them with the premiums. Uh, it's, the program has served over 20,000, 23,000 people, both small business workers, their families, as well as individuals. Uh, unfortunately, because of funding um, challenges, it hasn't been open for new enrollment, and um, as, as premiums have gone up even slightly in that program last year, I believe it was 11%, which in our market is, um, is slight. Um, I, I can tell you that the major carrier recently came in with a premium increase of 40%, for, um, and actually that was for their consumer-driven product higher than the other products they sell. So 11% premium increase for the uh, Dirigo Choice doesn't, is not as high as the rest of the market is asking for, but that forced some people to leave that program because they just couldn't afford even the 11%. Uh, due to limited incomes, their wages have not gone up, and everything else has gone up, the price of food, gas, energy. Mm -hmm. So it's been really uh, difficult, um, absent um, a, a strong and, and real financing mechanism. There's been a lot of talk here that states could do this. If we were able to address to, um, the I'm going to have to cut you short because we have one more member and we have three votes. So. Well, could you finish your sentence? I just want sure, to go ahead. States need help. If we were able to tackle the health care crisis, we would have done it. We want to do it. We cannot do it alone. Despite um, uh, Ed's comments earlier, we need help, and we want to be your partners in tackling the, mm -hmm. the health care crisis. Well, okay. to make this work, there are times when the federal government if, it should just really a balance, shift the balance a little bit more. It, when states are having a, a hard time, or that's one of the ways it, it could survive. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shea. 